Being friends with the top brass in the country grants you packs most can only dream of. Forget cushy allowances. True power means you can maneuver through scandals untouched by the very laws you are supposed to uphold. Gilbert Masengeli, the acting inspector general of police, knows this game all too well. It is why his name is the hottest topic on every street corner right now. Why? Well, let's just say Masengeli has developed a casual habit of brushing off court orders like they are minor inconveniences. My lord, to date they have come before you to make fun of this honorable court by coming to report that the IG is doing other duties. There are more important things than the lives of Kenyans. Currently, the nation's top cop is a wanted man. His crime? Repeatedly snubbing the courts over the mysterious disappearance of three brothers during the explosive Gen Z protest. Barely three months into his temporary tenure as the head of law enforcement and Masengeli's already making waves for all the wrong reasons. Among them, his apparent distaste for the rule of law. Justice Lawrence Mugambi, tired of this Inspector General defiance, had summoned Masengeli to explain what exactly happened to the missing trio in Kitengela. I want to pledge to work within the rule of law and as per the Constitution. I am ready to guide the officers to ensure the public get the desired services. But in a delicious twist of irony, the enforcer of laws decided to enforce his own by ghosting the court. After multiple summons, he opted to send his deputy, Eliud Lagarde, instead, claiming he was out of town in Wajir, busy assessing security situations, a task apparently far more urgent than obeying the country's legal system. According to sources, Masengeli had jetted off to Wajir and Mandera that Monday, a convenient excuse, though everyone knew the real game. Delay, deflect, and dodge. On the date, on the date, my lord, we see indications in the court that the acting is not the general for this was held up at uh, the cost on operational matters. specifically Lamu, and that he was proceeding to the north, the northeastern corridor of the Republic, that is Wajir, Mandera, and those sides. His legal team scrambled, feeding the High Court the usual excuse about official duties, but Justice Mugambi wasn't buying it. The more Masengeli wriggled, the tighter the legal noose became. Yet, Masengeli wasn't going down without flexing his influence. Rumor has it, the judge's own security detail received curious calls from none other than Lazarus Opicho, the commandant of the special government body, VIP Protection Unit. Opicho's inquiries into the judge's whereabouts were a little too persistent to the point where Mugambi had to call it what it was, outright intimidation. Having failed to obey the court, two court orders, the first respondent equally failed to obey the third one that required him to attend this court this afternoon. The court has teeth and can bite. It will not watch at its authority and the constitutionalism is slowly being whittled away. When the very forces meant to protect justice start trailing judges, you know the scales of power are tilting dangerously. Social media ever the oracle of public opinion predicted this showdown from the go-to. Everyone knew Mugambi was up against a man drenched in privilege, someone who could and would bend the rules to avoid accountability. And the real question wasn't if Masengeli would pull a power move, it was how brazen that move would be. And so, while the state scrambled to shield Masengeli from facing the music, the judge has set Friday as D-Day the moment when Masengeli's fate and Opicho's alleged meddling will be decided. 
In a bold stroke, Justice Mugambi has already rejected attempts by Attorney General Representative Charles Mutinda to delay the inevitable. Masengeli may have been playing chess, but it seems Mugambi's the one putting him in check. Petition was filed. There had been no response from your end. There had been no appearance from your end. All that had happened earlier. Now, it reached a point now when it began to summon the Inspector General of Police to come and tell us why there has been apparent disregard, actually not apparent, disregard of all this on the service issue. Since security is our priority and safety of each and everyone is our responsibility, the common Mwananchi, the Wanchiku, should not only feel safe but be safe at all costs. We have no other ways. When that summons are given, those summons must be respected. We have families who have brothers to petitioners, siblings to the petitioners, parents to the petitioners, who don't know where the, par the persons they are interested or they care about are missing for three weeks.